All right, everybody, it's time finally to demonstrate the chip and dip. It is a really fun piece to make. It's, um, it's all the best parts of bowls and plates combined and uh, added twist of just separating the pieces out and throwing them. Um, it moves, uses a fair amount of clay. I'm gonna do mine with about five pounds of clay and um, I'm doing it on a bat and I absolutely recommend doing them on a bat. Um, and I also recommend making them so that they've got a flat bottom and there's no trimming involved. Uh, if you want to do a trimmed foot, I would do two feet, um, one under the base of the bowl part in the middle and one out at the outside edge. And if you do that, it's pretty important to get your chip space the same height as your dip space so that when you flip it over, it doesn't cave in or collapse. Um, I'm going to keep mine simple, uh, and I hope you will too. No trimming, just uh, maybe wood knifing at the outside edge, and we'll throw this all in one piece. So I'm going to reset the camera and get this clay ready, and we're going to do it. I've got about five pounds of clay that should be plenty to create this form, even though it's not going to have a, a trim foot. There's a fair amount of clay involved in making both the inner bowl and the outer um, Place to contain all of the chips. So let's go ahead and smack this on center a little bit. Make sure it's really stuck to the wheel and packed down. This pre-centering that you can do while it's still dry, I find pretty helpful. It just means that once I get it wet, it goes on center that much easier. I want to make sure it's centered and attached to the wheel evenly the whole way around before I do any spreading out of the clay. Now that it's centered, I'm going to keep my hand down against the base, this is my right hand, and I'm going to press down with my left and keep pulling back against the wall a little bit with my right so that I maintain good contact with the bat and I keep a vertical edge here instead of letting it form kind of a mushroom shape. And I'll continue to spread it out like that as long as it feels comfortable to do that. Initially, I can connect my hands a little bit. And at this point, they're actually working independently and I don't love the way that feels. It doesn't feel super stable, but I am using every other possible way of bracing my forearms down against the splash pan, this arms against my leg, and everything is staying pretty well on center. At some point, I'm going to switch to a different way of doing it, which is how I make uh, big platters. And it's kind of like you would open a bowl, two fingers on top of the thumb and pushing. But instead of it just being two fingers, I'll put my whole fist over my thumb and then back my thumb up so that I'm not directly over the center. And that's going to leave a high part in the middle. That's going to be the clay that I use to form the bowl for the dip. And then I'll draw this clay out. My left hand, the fingers are sealing the clay to the wheel and keeping this edge contained and vertical. So I've got this weird little pyramid in the middle that'll be the raw material for my um, dip bowl. And then I've got a lower area, and then I've got this large ring that'll become the outer rim of the bowl. Now it's important to check thicknesses as you go. So I'm going to kind of check here. I've got maybe five eighths near the center. I've got half an inch out here, more like five eighths. So because I don't want to trim this, I'm going to go ahead and take this whole central area that's neither the dip part or the outer rim of the bowl, and I'm going to flatten it and lower it. Just using the side of my thumb again, just kind of like a tool. There's not really a fixed technique for this. You just want to get it all compressed and keep checking before. You don't want to get too thin, but there's no sense in leaving it really thick. I'm getting down about three eighths, three eighths, closer to a half. So that's going to be pretty appropriate. I'm not looking for a quarter of an inch because this is going to be a big pot. And I think quarter inch bottom would be a little um, flimsy. 
So I'm gonna get in here with the flat part of this rib and just press that whole area nice and flat. And this will really compress the bottom and make everything feel sturdy and happy. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna recenter this central lump of clay that's gonna become the dip bowl and push it down and just go ahead and, and almost just throw the bowl as if there was no other um, weirdness about this. Gotta be careful not to um, push it thin where it meets the bottom of the whole um, form. Leave that all nice and even. But I don't want it to be a spike, I wanna get it down and get it into a shape where it's gonna open and behave like a regular bowl. This nice little doorknob shape. I do this part first so that it's done um, and I don't have to reach up over the outer wall to work. So I get this, this part done and then I'll work the outer part. So I'm just opening like a regular bowl here and I'm gonna check that center thickness. A little over a half an inch, so I've got a little ways to go. Not far. And then I'm gonna make a nice curve through here, but a fairly flat bottom. Gonna work that until I'm happy. And then I'm gonna pull this up some. I don't need to go crazy. Remember, this is just for your dip. Maybe something like that. Yeah, that should be plenty. And I can refine that a little bit in a, um, in a second after I do the other part. But let's go ahead and make the, the chip now that we've made the dip. I get that plenty wet. When you've got a, a big, wide ring of clay that you're going to be pulling up, make sure you get it evenly wet the whole way around. There's no sense just drizzling a little bit in one spot and having it catch as it comes around. Checking that this all feels nice and smooth and compressed, and it does. I'm going to dig in and grab a hold of this clay and bring it up. I'd like to get it a little bit taller than the dip part because then when I stretch it out, it'll be level. And actually right now, it's just about perfect. They're the same height. Um, it's not really important, but if they're the same height, it'll stack better in the cupboard. And um, if you did want to flip it over to trim it, you'd be able to without it collapsing. rim nice and sturdy. You need to get all this water out of the floor because that will definitely contribute to more cracking and problems. Uh, before I shape the outside at all, I want to take this moment to use the wood knife and trim the outside. If I wood knife it while it's kind of up and, and accessible, I can make it look pretty finished and nice. Um, if I wait and go ahead and give it more of a curve, it's going to be harder to get in there. So I've got my wood knife. I'm going to take the clay off of it. I didn't clean it when I put it away last time. Not the best practice, but uh, you do want to have your wood knife damp and clean before you use it. And I'm just going to come in and cut that little tiny flare of clay off. That's it hitting the wheel. And then I'm gonna to try to come in with the splash pan still on and cut underneath that. Sometimes you can't get in there and you've gotta take the splash pan off. Let's see how this one does. 
so far not coming off in one big ring like I want. Let's just hope and get it started peeling off of there. No, this is probably a take the splash pan off job. Um, sometimes you just can't get up under it. That should come off now. Yeah, there's the rest of it. If you get it cut right and you undercut it correctly with the needle tool, it should just peel away in one nice piece. Get that splash pan back on there. Now it's just a matter of refining it. Um, I wouldn't want to really leave it just the way it is with the um, sponge texture in the bottom. It just doesn't look very finished to me. So I'm going to get in there with a the rib and refine the shape. I love these yellow ribs for that. So I'm going to get the clay off of it and go in the inside. There are lots of things to catch the rib on. You know, you've got that inner bowl. Um, so you just really have to pay attention to all edges of this rib and make sure you're aware of where they are and what they could be gouging. So I'm gonna start by kind of crisping up this bowl. That looks so much better. And I'm gonna work the outside of the bowl, but you have to be really, really careful I just dropped goop all over there. It's okay. Um, you have to be really careful not to gouge into the floor because it's not the wheel. That's the outside um, area of your chip and dip. So I'm using my pinky over that edge to make sure that I can't gouge the rib into the base there. That's cleaned up. Now I'm going to come in with the rib. And again, I'm going to be careful with where those edges are. Work this floor. Stretch it out a little bit. We're still level. That's starting to look nice. Shape that up a little bit. Scrape that outside edge a little bit. And now it's just a matter of taking the chamois to both of those rims and making them look a little bit more complete. Don't want to leave any sharp edges. There's always the temptation when you're making a chip and dip like this to get extra fancy and do something like, you know, maybe pie crust flute one bowl or the other, um, and that's fine. I, I tend to like to just play around with the glazes and not so much um, worry about trying to make the pot itself extra fancy. I think a chip and dip in and of itself is pretty, pretty snazzy and festive, so um, I don't go crazy. Shammied and shammied. One drop of water in the floor, of course. So I'm just come back and give one more pass with the rib. Clean that up. And that's about as perfect as I can get the old chip and dip. This one is luckily, um, and this is a thing to think about. This one is luckily just 
a little bit smaller than the diameter of that bat. So if I wanted to flip it over, uh, I would be able to. It's going to fit on a regular standard bat. Um, I happen to have at home a bunch of um, oversized bats so that if I do make things that are too big, I can still flip them. But that's something for you to think about uh, if you just have a 14 inch bat or a 14 and a quarter inch bat. If you get that diameter out too wide, you won't be able to flip it. Um, I'm not going to recheck, but my, my thought was that the floor of this was 3 eighths of an inch thick and I've cleaned up the outside edge. So my plan for this piece is no trim, just wire it off, let it dry. I will probably flip it over and just soften the outside edge so it's not sharp and it'll glaze up really nice and call it a chip and dip. Have fun with this one. Uh, obviously you're pushing around a lot of clay. It does help if you soften up your clay a little bit if you can plan ahead and uh, poke some holes in your clay and add a little bit of water. That does make it a lot easier to push around and you don't have to um, sweat as much trying to get it centered. Uh, definitely be sure that your clay is well wedged up. If it's uneven, um, it will not work well at all. So another project for the week. I hope you enjoy it and um, let me know how your, how your results are.